Welcome back to the course of Introduction into Intercultural Communication. Today we are going to start lecture number 7, Intercultural Competence Interaction between Culture and Language. The lecture will help you identify the concept of cultural competence and communicative competence, distinguish the skills to be acquired for intercultural competence, compare and contrast language and thinking, discuss forms of cultural thought patterns of English and your native language. Cultural competence helps to understand how and why people think, act and do in the way they do and what they think of you. With culture is used because it implies the integrated patterns of human behavior that includes thoughts, communications, actions, customs, beliefs, values and institutions of racial, ethnic, religious or social groups. According to Cross and his colleagues, cultural competence is a set of congruent behaviors, attitudes and policies that become together in a system, agency or among professionals and enable that system, agency or those professions to work efficiently in cultural, cross-cultural situations. Cultural competence referring to an ability to interact effectively with people of different cultures comprises four components. First, awareness of one's own cultural worldview. The second, attitude towards cultural differences. The third, knowledge of different cultural practices and worldviews. And the last fourth, cross-cultural skills. Acquisition or acquiring cross-cultural awareness is closely connected with language teaching with the aims to give learners intercultural competence as well as linguistic competence, to prepare them for interaction with people of other cultures, to enable them to understand and accept people from other cultures as individuals with other distinctive perspectives, values and behaviors, to help them to see that such interaction is an enriching experience and a lack of cross-cultural awareness can result in misinterpretations which may cause offense. Attitudes and beliefs presuppose that culturally competent individual is aware of and sensitive to her his own cultural heritage and respects and values different heritages aware of his or her own values and uh, biases and how they may affect perceptions of other cultures, comfortable with differences that exist between his or her culture and other cultures, cultural values and beliefs, sensitive to circumstances that may be personal biases, uh, ethnic identity, political influences, and etc., that may require seeking assistance from a member of a different culture when interacting, interacting with another uh, member of that culture. What do we mean by knowledge? The knowledge we mean the culturally competent individual must have a good understanding of the power structure in society and how non-dominant groups are treated, to be aware of institutional barriers that prevent members of disadvantaged groups from using organizational and societal resources. Cross-cultural skills accept that culturally competent individual can generate a wide variety of verbal and non-verbal responses when dealing with differences, send and receive both verbal and non-verbal messages accurately and appropriately, and exercise intervenes appropriately and advocate on behalf of people from different cultures. Besides these above-mentioned four components, we should be aware that one should experience the adjustment in, in a new culture. His or her cultural competence increases in accordance with certain adjustment stages. Unconscious competence, conscious competence, conscious competence, and unconscious competence. Unconscious competence, at this stage, you are aware of cultural differences. It does not occur to you that you may be making mistakes or that you might be misinterpreting much of the behavior going on around you. In conscious competence, you realize that there are differences between how you and local people behave, though you understand very little about those differences, how numerous they might be. 
in the conscious competence, you know cultural differences exist. You know that some of those differences are and you adjust your behavior accordingly. You have to make a conscious effect to behave in culturally appropriate ways. In the last stage, unconscious competence, you no longer have to think about what you are doing in order to do the right thing. It takes little effort for you to be culturally sensitive. Thus, it is clear that personal awareness, knowledge of the other cultures and applications of that knowledge are necessary elements of intercultural competence. It's not a mistake to think that effective intercultural and cross-cultural communicators are born, that some people have a natural talent and others do not. Intercultural communication is based on interpersonal, one demanding five skills that should be acquired. They are developing a range of communication skills, adapting communication appropriately, which implies to consider personal goals, context and the people with whom we communicate, engaging in dual uh, perspective, which is understanding both our own and another person's perspectives, beliefs, thoughts or feelings, monitoring communication, which is the capacity to observe and regulate your own communication, and the last, communicating to effective and if, um, ethical interpersonal communication requires that you invest energy in communicating uh, ethically with others as unique human beings. The cross-cultural communication demands uh, cross-cultural competence that involves ability in three areas or domains. These are the ability to establish and maintain relations, the ability to communicate with minimal loss or distortion, and the ability to collaborate in order to accomplish something of mutual interest or need. Communicative competence in nowadays intercultural communication is mainly based on English as the main language in international relations, education and business. At present, people all over the world mainly learn English for practice usage, for traveling, meeting new people, acquainting with literature and art of other countries, using internet, uh, entering international educational institutions and cooperating with partners from other countries. Communicative competence includes grammatical com competence, which means sentence-level grammar, social linguistic competence, which is meant by an understanding of the social context in which language is used, discourse competence, which is an understanding of how utterances are strung together to form a meaningful whole, and strategic competence, which is a language uses employments of strategies to make the best use of what he or she knows about how a language works in order to interpret, express, and negotiate meaning in a given context. Linguistic approaches to determining cross-cultural communicative competence have been outlined by Nap and Nap Pathov. In their approach, this competence is understood as the ability to achieve an equally successful understanding with members of other cultures and communication networks as with their own. In detail, what does it mean? It means the ability to anticipate and compensate for unforeseeable problems arising from uh, strangers. Components of this ability are, at least, a specific knowledge of patterns of communicative action and interpretation in one's own, as well as in the relevant foreign language and culture, knowledge, general knowledge about the relation between culture and co communication, including the dependence of human thinking and acting on culture-specific cognitive schemata, the dimensions in which cultures can differ the specific limitations of the above-mentioned types of communication. Therefore, the main purpose of studying English nowadays is communicative competence that is based on a range of others, other competences. Linguistic competence, which is knowledge of the language system, rules of language units, functionality and ability of understanding and expressing ideas in written or oral forms using the system, social, speech, social linguistic competence, 
which is knowledge of forming and form formulation ideas using language, usage of this means for understanding the ideas of other people and for experiencing one's ideas. Social cultural competence, which is the knowledge of national cultural characteristics of social and speech norms, of conduct, customs, traditions, etiquette, social stereotypes, history, culture, and the means of applying this knowledge. The, the next, social competence, which is the ability to get into in communication with other people, to orient in intercourse situation, to express thoughts within one's intentions and situation. Strategic competence, which is the ability to fill the blanks in language knowledge. Therefore, communicative competence includes knowledge of linguistic forms and ability to use the forms appropriately. Language is more than just a means of communication. It influences our culture and even our thought processes. Language provides us with many of the categories we use for expression of our thoughts. So it is therefore natural to assume that our thinking is influenced by the language which we use. People try to find answers to the question whether we think in language, whether creatures without language can think, and the way language shapes our concepts. Speech begins in the brain. The size and complexity of the brain allows complex speech. There are two main questions. Is language acquisition a product of nature or nurture? Which comes first, language or thought? Common sense tells us that language is a useful tool for expressing thought, but that uh, is not necessary. Thus, child development researchers have found that young children understand concepts before they start speaking and using words to explain them and that they can assign objects to categories even when they do not have the relevant vocabulary. In order to communicate effectively across cultures, you need to understand the cultural thought patterns behind the language of communication. The way we think equally depends on culture and is influenced by the culture. Different cultures are distinguished by various thought patterns. What is a thought pattern? A thought pattern expresses the interaction of a number of concepts. It represents a way to think about the underlying subject matter. The most obvious example of a thought pattern is provided by language itself. As a thought pattern, our language shapes our way of thinking in more ways than we could over, ever express. It influences how we hear information presented. In 1966, Robert Kaplan introduced his cultural thought pattern approach based on contrastive rhetoric holds that people in different cultures organize their ideas differently. For example, English, including Germanic languages such as German, Dutch, Norwegian, Danish, and Swedish, portrayed by Kaplan graphically as an arrow. This style of communication may be viewed by other cultural groups as abrupt or inappropriate. Semitic, where belong Arabic and Hebrew, thoughts are expressed in a series of parallel ideas, both positive and negative. Coordination is valued over subordination. Oriental languages, like languages of Asia, where communication is indirect, portrayed by Kaplan as spiral. A topic is not addressed but viewed from various perspectives working around and around the point. Largely, Asian communication is listening-centered. The ability to listen and a special talent for detecting various communicative cues is treated as equally important as, if not important, than the ability to speak. Romance, Latin-based languages such as French, Italian, Romanian and Spanish, portrayed as an arrow with sharp turns in the shaft. Communication often digresses. It is fine to introduce extraneous material, which adds to the richness of the communication. Russian, like Romance languages, Russian communication is often digressive.
The digression may include a series of parallel ideas. Habitual patterns of thought are manifested in communication behavior. Since our habits of thought are largely determined by culture, in cross-cultural situations, we should see contrast in these styles of communication. For example, European Americans, particularly Maines, tend to use a linear style that marches from point to point, establishing links and finally stating an explicit conclusion. When someone veers off his line, uh, he or she is likely to hear a statement such as, I'm not quite following you, or could we cut to the chase, or what the bottom line? In order not to have cross-cultural conflict with the listener and speaker, there are some strategies. Take responsibility for the communication. When we communicate with others, it is very tempting to blame them for not understanding us. We, with our understanding oratory skills, cannot be possible at fault. The problem with this attitude is that it does not achieve our outcome of getting the other person to comprehend what we are trying to say. When we take a responsibility for getting a message across to others, uh, it frees us to do whatever it takes to achieve that result. Check nonverbal feedback. When you speak to someone, do not assume that you are making yourself clear to the other person. Check for nonverbal feedback. People give us many clues as to whether or not they understand us. Do they look confused? Are they unusual quiet? Uh, when asked if they have any questions, do, do they answer with a hesit hesitant no? Uh, there are all subtle signs that the individual is not sure of what you just said. Continue communicating until the, you see the signs. Be flexible and do not make people wrong. When we communicate with others, the chances are good, very good that we will have to change strategies along the way. Do not make people wrong because this communication style is different from yours. If you do, you will not only have to deal with communication problems, but also conflict and neg negative feelings. Instead, recognize that each person's uniqueness adds color to the mosaic of life and do whatever you need to do to get your message across correctly. A thought pattern is always subjectively created and successively objectified by different situational procedures. The most visible level is behavior and artifact. This is the observable level of culture and consists of behavior patterns and outward manifestations of culture. The word artifact comes from two Latin words. The first, arte, means by skill, from ars, skill. The second, factum, is the past participle of facare, to do or to make. The word dates back to the early 800s, meaning something created by humans, usually for a practical purpose, especially an object remaining from a particular period, and something characteristic of or resulting from a particular human institution, period, trend, or individual. Most definitions focus on the quality of art artifacts as things, speaking of objects and remains rather than process or production. Typical definitions are anything made by human art and workmanship, an artifact product. In archaeology, applied to the rude products of original workmanship as distinguished from natural remains, a product of human art or workmanship, any object made by human beings. The words we use for different kinds of artifacts are also shaped by our history in using them. When we speak of interfaces, for example, we think of human computer interaction and not shoes or cups. Despite this fact, shoes and cups are interfaces of a kind, a different kind, but interfaces uh, nevertheless. When we speak of products and process, we generally do not think of things 
digital, but a software package is as much product as a block of cheese and we produce the system that allows us to manage lines of customers at a bank. Thus, we may draw the conclusion that con cultural competency develops over time and needs to be actively supported with awareness, knowledge, which is the information necessary to interact appropriately and effectively, specific skills, which is behaviors necessary to interact appropriately and effectively, as well as polished through cross-cultural encounters. So developing cross-cultural and intercultural competence is an ongoing process that requires lifelong learning. Artifacts and behavior also may tell us what a group is doing, but not why. We often seem to be viewing a world epitomized by symbols of ethnicity, tribalism, religion, or even myths. Cultural behavior must involve the use of artifacts. Moreover, language, language is an important element in human culture considered as the primary abstract artifact by which culture is transmitted. After you watch the lecture, please carefully study the following questions.